Eric Pitts, the chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute, joining us now more to talk about this. Explain exactly what we were looking at, Derek. Well, the images that you see that were presented by NASA today are images of a number of different examples of the kind of astronomical objects that the telescope will be examining during its lifetime. So the first one that came out yesterday was what's called the ultra deep field image that shows thousands of galaxies in a very, very tiny piece of space. You know, the example that was given by um, NASA Administrator Nelson is that the area of sky that was shown in that picture is about the size of a sand grain on the tip of your finger held at arm's length. So then you can just imagine how full of galaxies the rest of the sky must be. So that's one image. Another image that has been shown is a picture of an exoplanet, a planet that's orbiting another star, and a spectral profile of its atmosphere indicating that there's water vapor in that atmosphere. Now this planet is so close to its sun that it's really very, very hot and the water can only exist as uh, steam, but it also gives you the sense that this is an opportunity for us to learn much, much more about the Earth-like possibilities of planets orbiting other stars. I'm interested in the telescope and I saw you on Alex Hawley's story this morning describing just how powerful this thing is. Care to explain? <laughs> well, the analogy I used this morning is that if you think about the power of this telescope, if there were mosquitoes on the planet Pluto and there were a pimple on the back of that mosquito, this telescope would make that pimple look as if it's the size of Mount Everest. Wow. <laughs> Yes, it's enormous. <laughs> it, it really does a fabulous job. And I hope what that does is that puts an image in your brain of exactly how powerful this telescope That's is. exactly why I asked it, because it really helps us understand what we're looking at. You yeah. Know? Um, so why is this such a big, big deal, e even if you're not into astronomy? And, and what comes after this discovery? What's really great about this telescope is that this telescope has the capability to go much further than Hubble Telescope did in providing us information about our universe. This telescope is going to allow us to answer some of the questions created by Hubble Space Telescope, but it's also going to gather so much information we're going to have thousands more questions to try to answer about the universe. So the practical applications of this are that we all get to have yet a new and better understanding of the universe. And even if you're not into astronomy, everybody loves the pictures. They really are beautiful. So in addition, about 10 new technologies had to be invented for this telescope to actually work. And we know they're all working just fine. But that technology is going to come down to us and eventually become part of our everyday lives. We may not see it today, but you can be assured that those technologies, as well as many others involved in this, are going to become part of our everyday lives. All right. Well, the pictures are just amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, we thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Derek. Thanks for all right. Always great. You can hear him, listen to him talk. I know, forever. Absolutely.